Hey, good morning, Christ staff, friends, and responders. Not exactly sure who I'm going to send this to, but I felt like it was too good to not share. This is really speaking to me this morning. So James 1 out of the Passion Translation says, My fellow believers, my friends out there, when it seems as though when it seems as though you're facing nothing but difficulties, see it as an invaluable opportunity to experience the greatest joy that you can. <laughs> like that, it sounds like such a loaded question. The ex experience the greatest joy that we possibly can when we're facing nothing but difficulties? It's an invaluable opportunity. Like, my goodness, it just seems like everything that can go wrong will go wrong. Um, it's been happening on the deployment to the Grenadines. It's happening in my household. If I told you all the details of what happened on deployment personally, and everything that is mounting in my household, how many things are breaking, appliances, cars, electrical outages, freezers going out, drainage issues, flooded basement. Um, I'll just tell you, there's just been this incredible joy, peace, and patience in the midst of it. I wouldn't wish this on anybody. Um, I don't want to have to go through this, but God is doing something in the midst of it. Verse three, for when you know when your faith is tested, it stirs up in you the power of endurance. Even getting off the plane after a really hard deployment. I would say maybe the most physically uncomfortable deployment I've ever been on. This was actually harder than going to the front lines of Ukraine. 100% for sure. This was hard. Very uncomfortable. Not even a moment of comfort. Not even a moment of pleasure or reprieve. It just, it, it just seemed like it was always on. And um, for you know, when your faith is tested, it stirs up in you the power of endurance. Um, I'm just getting off the plane in Charlotte, you know, got like a hundred mosquito bites on me, just wrung out, sleepless nights. And uh, it was insane. The airline, for whatever reason, it took two hours to get the bags off the plane. They kept stringing us along. We just kept waiting and waiting. Even Laura and I on our way home, we took a wrong turn. We're like, oh my goodness. It's like, what can go wrong seems to be going wrong. And we're praying, believing God for breakthrough. But it's like, you almost feel like this stuff is like scripted. I, I, there's a mystery in this. I don't know. But I know that my patience has grown. My endurance has grown. It says this in verse four, and then as your endurance grows even stronger, it will release perfection into every part of your being until there is nothing missing and nothing lacking. Guys, God's at work. And if anyone longs to be wise, ask God for wisdom and he will give it. He won't see your lack of wisdom as an opportunity to scold you over your failures, but he will overwhelm your failures with his generous grace. And I was looking at this and I just feel like for me personally, this just ties into all of this stuff in terms of identity that I've been walking through. I thought I understood identity and my character and my personality and how I'm wired and all of those things. And uh, the Lord's been showing me stuff about identity and even, even how the Lord doesn't want to relate to me in my places of false identity. And I realize how often prayers go unanswered because we're relating to God out of places of our false identity, out of fear, out of protection for ourselves or our comforts or whatever. And God's like, you're praying off the wrong script over here. You're not thinking the way that I think. And I think we end up with a lot of unanswered prayers because we're praying out of this place of a wrong view of God, wrong view of ourselves. And, um, and so, you know, like even with this deployment, it would be so easy 
in the natural to look at how things aren't happening or there's these holes and these missing pieces, whatever, and everything's going wrong seemingly, but really in the midst of it, there is an absolute grace. And when we actually pray according to his will, we've seen God produce so many things in those moments and answers that we didn't have answers for. It's such an incredible opportunity for our faith to grow, our faith to shine, and for God to come in. And um, if anyone longs to be wise, ask God for wisdom and he'll give it. He won't see your lack of wisdom as an opportunity to scold you over your failures. It'd be so easy to look at this deployment and just even say, God's grace isn't on this and He's sending centipedes and land crabs and, you know, rough seas and sleepless nights and rain and nobody's showing up because you're in the wrong place. It's such a wrong view of God. Of course God wants us to be on this island. Of course he wants us to go to the least and the lost and the forgotten and the overlooked. But apostolic mission comes with a cost it comes with sacrifice and when you know that you're in a ground war there's gonna be resistance it tells you you're on the money you're you're fighting for ground that's contested i remember i was part of a house church network in the inner city of kansas city and i went to go volunteer at the guy's house one day and he was, he was like, you know what? We're moving out of the suburbs. We're moving right into the heart of this mission. And he's refurbishing this entire household. I'm a carpenter and I'm, I felt like I was a really good finished carpenter. And I went over to just go help him with handrails one day. And I was building these handrails. And I'm telling you, I was beating the snot out of my hand. I was hitting my fingers. Each one of my fingers was black and blue from my own hammer. I mean, very rarely would I strike my own hand with a hammer. I was just, I'm like, this is so basic, the stuff that I'm doing. How come I keep getting injured? And after like my whole hand, I went to this guy, Tim. I said, hey, I need a couple of band-aids here. I go, I don't know what's going on. I feel like I got a hornet's nest on my head here. I just keep smashing my fingers. And he just looked at me, goes, welcome to the apostolic. This is contested ground. Thank you for coming and standing and fighting with me. And it was such a valuable lesson that I never forgot. And uh, it's so important to surround yourself with people who believe in the mission, who will fight the fight with you, who will go to any length. We're looking for responders who are willing to kind of disembowel the Western concept of missions and Christianity. You know, there's no term in the Bible for the word missionary. There's none. There's none. There's no, there's no one called a missionary. I truly believe it's a watered-down version of, of what the apostolic is supposed to be. The apostolic is sent ones with power and authority. And when we send ones with power and authority, with an apostolic lens and worldview, guys, powerful things happen and the devil shakes. He gets nervous because the kingdom of God is coming to a region and something is gonna be established that's going to have life and a multiplying factor to it. It's not just evangelism and, hey, we're going to do a couple nice things over here. We're going to pat this person on the back and bless you, brother. No, when we were sent with power and authority, the ground trembles. The heavens are shaking. Powers and principalities were coming up against those things because it sees what we're called to. You know, the Lord's been really growing me and galvanizing me in my own identity. And I'll tell you what, when Jesus was baptized in the Jordan River and he heard his father's voice said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And then he went out from that place. That was before he did anything powerful. It was before he started his public ministry, he had to be galvanized in his identity. And I believe that's exactly what the Lord is doing with cry in terms of our apostolic mandate. And I just feel like we haven't seen anything yet compared to what the Lord wants to do. I believe we're on the verge of the biggest breakthrough across the board. Like everything changes after this. 
And uh, I'm not going to give in to the smoke and mirrors. Much of what we've been seeing with this demonic warfare, it's like smoke and mirrors. It's not even reality. Like you get, it looks bad, feels bad. We think the worst. And then we realize, wow, it's not really even that bad. And you look at the, the life of the apostles. Paul talked about it. He talked about the marks of apostolic ministry, shipwrecks beatings, stonings, floggings, all of these things. People don't want to go for that journey. The price is too high, this far, no more. You're going to lose people. But I'll tell you what, I'm crossing over this Jordan River. I'm laying hold of the prize. I'm laying hold. I, I, I have everything in. I have never been more in than in this moment. And this deployment to Myro, it signifies that and it's an invitation. And in just a little, tiny, little, 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 little way, we're getting to experience some of the discomforts that those who walk in an apostolic gospel get to experience. Most of it's smoke and mirrors so far, little tiny things, mosquitoes, heat exhaustion, food poisoning, things along those lines. Verse six, just make sure you ask empowered by confident faith without doubting that you will receive. It goes back to the identity thing. If we're praying from a false identity and a wrong view that he's a good father and for us, we're not gonna receive a thing. We're praying out of false identity. For the ambivalent person believes one minute, doubts the next, being undecided. God, are you for me? Are you against me? God is for us. God is for cry. He is for for you and he wants to see the kingdom crash into the nations of the earth in the context of crisis because we are called to fulfill the great commission in the context of it for the ambivalent person believes one minute doubts the next being undecided makes you become like the rough seas and tossed by the wind you're up one minute and down the next what a roller coaster ride verse seven and eight when you're half-hearted and wavering it leaves you unstable can you really expect to receive anything from the lord when you're in that condition we just have to settle it. If your faith remains strong, even while surrounded by life's difficulties, you will continue to experience the untold blessings of God. I can't tell you how many scripture verses I've been in the Psalms from Psalm 24, Psalm 38, just in that span. Don't give up. Your work is about to be rewarded. I'm telling you, we are on the verge of a powerful breakthrough and a powerful manifestation of our mission and mandate. Goes on in verse 12, true happiness comes as you pass the test with faith and receive the victorious crown of life promised to every lover of God. Guys, I'm laying hold of this and I'm just inviting each and every one of you to join me in this mission to Myro, and for all of us who are working behind the scenes, I know it has not been easy, but we need to see what God sees and we need to understand and believe that he's for us and we need to pray and believe and not focus on the smoke in the mirrors and what the enemy is throwing at us to discourage us and get us off the mark. I'm telling you, it's going to be worth it. So anyway, that's my encouragement to you guys today. I just wanted to share. It was too good to keep to myself. I'm just learning how to walk in this. And um, let's go run in this together. God bless you guys. Oh, by the way, tonight, Zoom call, 7 p.m. 7 p.m. tonight, Zoom call. Even if you have an inkling, maybe all the odds are stacked against you about going to my row. I want to invite you to come with us on this call tonight. I'm going to share some important things. God bless you guys.